Ramble. Thank you to Lume, Athletic Greens, Stitch Fix, and Caraway for sponsoring this episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of You Can Sit With Us. I'm one of your hosts, Becky. I'm joined by Maggie. Hi. We got Rainy on the ones and twos. Hello. Our sweet, sweet Matthew is off supporting a friend. And today, we've got Keith. Hey, Keith. Hey, it's me. So excited to be here. (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. This is our part two of... Our baby baby Henry story. They already right. know his name by now. Of course. This one. We didn't bury that lead. No. Sure. Um, he is with Rachel while she does her meeting. We had talked about it last week. She had to go. <laughs> and she's okay with that. She is okay with that. Okay, good. She's okay with that. <laughs> that was that was her suggestion. She wanted to hold the baby. We freely hand him away. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, actually I have a question on etiquette on holding the baby. Because yes. I always want to hold a baby, but I also don't want to put the parents in a position and be like, I don't really want you to. So usually just don't ask. It, I think it depends on parents. There's yeah. depending on how young the baby is, yeah. and then if they already have another child they've had. People mm, tend uh-huh. to be less precious about the second one, yeah. or the third one even, only yeah. because they have some other creature that's alive that needs their attention. So yeah. mm-hmm. if you're like, "Can I hold it?" You're like, "Yes, here, <laughs> hold his head, don't let <laughs> it fall, go, go with God." Yeah. But I think when it's the only one, when they're very young, there are they. They, A, are more fragile, and you feel like they're even more fragile than they are. Yeah, right. Uh, he's much less fragile now. Still need to support his head, but he's yeah. not He's not a Fabergé egg anymore. Yeah, yeah. and another part of it is if, you know, your baby's an anti-vaxxer when they're first born. You know, yeah. They, don't, exactly. uh-huh. they need to get certain vaccines, and those only, they're usually like two- and three-part vaccines. Yeah. So, like, our personal rule is, like, very, very close friends and family can hold him yeah. once he was fully vac. Once he had his two month vaccines, uh-huh. and then probably once he has his, once he gets all of his shots, then we'll be like, Ray, Ray, here you go. Yeah, Take yeah, him. yeah. I think Erica um, Schmeck does a really good thing with friends where she goes, "If anyone would like to hold the baby, you're more than welcome." Yeah. But also, nobody has to hold the baby. Yeah. Just yeah. let me know. <laughs> That's <laughs> and a good she impression. Puts yeah. The, yeah, it kind of like takes ownership of. You know, if you want to, you can, but you don't have to, right? Yeah. But if, if you know, Maggie, if we're at dinner, she's like, can I hold honey? I'm like, sure, I'd love to eat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. It's gotten to a point, last night I scarfed my food down. I've never been a slow eater, but Becky's like, Maggie, are you done? And I was like, yes, I will hold Henry. <laughs> I was like, it seems like you're maybe done with that burger there. <laughs> so Keith, you, I mean, we heard the sort of the whole story. You did. But mm-hmm. I'm curious about like your perspective and maybe we can, since we've got the details, uh-huh. you don't have to go in every detail, sure. but like you're in a vacation rental. A good, yes. Yep. We're in a vacation we're rental. We're chilling and chilling. we're watching um, the Duggars documentary. Oh my God. We did not get this context. <laughs> oh. yeah, I didn't say what we were. I said we were, we're watching, watching documentary. the cult <laughs> of having so many children, <gasps> oh. as, as many children as possible. That was the foreplay. Put them into, yeah, yeah. That's where we were watching that and chilling. Uh, Becky runs out of the room. I am locked into this document. <laughs> I, I think you were making pizza too or something or cleaning I, up our I dinner. I always do that, but I, I, I had just finished doing like a bunch of cooking uh-huh. and cleaning. So okay. I finally sat down on the far end of the room on the long, there was a long Chase. couch, you know, like that I can put my legs up. <laughs> yep. I'm just chilling. Yep. And uh, watching this documentary, Becky runs out of the room. Jared <laughs> seems unsoothed for some reason, but I'm like, you know, this is a disturbing documentary. And uh, then I very <laughs> faintly hear Becky saying something, but it doesn't quite register that she's calling for me. And then Jared, Jared is like, uh, Keith, um, I think uh, I think Becky's calling for you. And I'm like, oh. And now in that moment, my obviously the cross, the cross of my mind is like, well, I sure hope that, that she's not going into labor. I don't want that right now. But maybe she just needs like toilet paper. Sometimes yeah. you're in the bathroom and you yeah. need there's, and there's no toilet, no toilet paper. Which I've done before and I'm going, yeah. Kee! So I'm walking in and then, you know, then it uh, there is immediately apparent to me that <laughs> Becky's water has broken, but she is refusing to accept that reality, which is fine. Mm-hmm. This is it. That's a that's an intense reality to accept. Yeah. yeah. But we're like, okay, well, I guess we got to go to the emergency room. <laughs> mm-hmm. So we go and uh, we get there and it's an emergency room. Yeah. Classic emergency uh-huh. room. Lots of people are there. It's a what time Saturday it? night <laughs> at like 11. 11 or something. So you've got people who are too drunk. You've got people uh, who have are 
yes, you got kids who are have mild injuries. Mm -hmm. You probably got some other kids with or people with crazy fevers, and they don't know what else to do. They go to the mm -hmm. emergency room, uh, especially on a Saturday night. That's you've got no other options. So we right. get there, but I will say what one good thing about going to labor is they immediately take Becky. Like they just mm -hmm. oh, pick yeah. her out of the crowd of people and be like, you're coming with me. She's gone. I, by the time I park my car and come back, cause I wow. dropped Becky off to be like, go, go, go. Um, they're like, Oh, she's already been taken into uh, labor and delivery. You'll have to go in the, uh, the front door. And I'm like, where is that? <laughs> <laughs> We've never been to this hospital. I'm like, Where's that? And they're like, it's over there. I'm like, okay. And then I walk in and then I go to the, the desk. And I'm like, hello. I, I uh, think I my we came into the emergency room and mm. my wife is upstairs like oh okay it's like uh, it's like well I think it looks looks like you're about to be a dad I'm like well maybe not <laughs> maybe it'll be like a, in a week it's like I would just accept it now and I'm like okay oh, <laughs> then, yes words of and, wisdom from security and he was basically like okay yeah whatever bro he's like this happens to me all the time people come in here they don't think it's happening and it's happening and they. They took my picture for my security badge, and I'm just sort of looking very normal or maybe frazzled. And he's like, <laughs> give us a smile, Dad. <laughs> and I'm like, so I'm just beaming in this <laughs> sticker that I will have for the next yeah. month and a half. <laughs> oh. <laughs> the picture taken of me at 1130. Oh, yeah. I didn't tell them about the stickers, the bracelet, or oh, yeah, going the, to see baby. Going to see baby. Um, <laughs> so, But then I get upstairs, finally find Becky. You know, we throughout the next, you know, several hours, uh, come to terms with the fact that we'll have the baby here. Mm -hmm. It's not our plan, no. not what we want to do, but that is the reality. And everybody has always said, you have a plan and it won't go to plan. So we're like, okay, getting used to this, uh, you know, the benefit is that where we're staying is very close to this hospital. Um, so that's good. Right. Right. Um, yeah. Now we still think though, you know, when we're going to labor, it's like, okay, we'll have the baby and we'll be here for a week. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That was not nope. obviously what happened. Um, the labor was crazy from my point of view. <laughs> yeah, how <laughs> um, was that? We, you know, Becky, did you talk about, uh, on the magnesium? I talked about the magnesium <laughs> a little bit. I talked the about the, the turkey doctor. Turkey doctor. But basically, we're going into labor. Becky's having incredible pains just in the afternoon of Sunday and worsening through the evening. But everyone seems to think this is not labor because it yeah. doesn't seem like it is but it's very clear to me that becky's in a lot of pain i'm like this is crazy i'm trying to do everything i can to distract from it mm -hmm. like a friend of ours sent us like a weird meditation <laughs> thing we were watching titanic yeah but what better to take your mind off of it than you know romance and destruction right um, <laughs> yeah we, we made it through a lot of titanic luckily uh my brother had texted us Make sure you're just constantly eating because oh. you don't know when the mm -hmm. last time you eat will be. Mm. Uh -huh. So you should just have food whenever you can because at some point you will stop eating. Like before the labor or like yeah, when, you're in the as, as when you're in the hospital? When you're okay. in the hospital, just yeah. keep like get food. So we got very mediocre Chipotle mm. um, and mm -hmm. that would end up being the last meal we had. That was like the dinner. Yeah. And we were kind of, you know, trying to sleep. I maybe slept for 20 minutes yeah, during yeah. Titanic before it became like clear that Becky was in like so much pain. I was like, okay, we got it. We need somebody to come yeah, figure it out. And then suddenly it was like, oh yeah, it's going to happen real soon. And they sent me away. Anesthesiologists came in. They took so long that they didn't get to do it. They brought me back. And from the time of me coming back in the room to the baby coming out was maybe seven minutes. Wow. Wow. Um, yeah, it was That's very cool. fast. He was like, Wee! He came out. He was all wiggling <laughs> like a little squid. <laughs> his, I mean, yeah. his, his legs were all in the yeah. wrong place. It was like, what's going on? They took him oh over, you know, because he was premature. Immediately, he's they're just plugging him into machines to monitor his health. Uh, and they're, I think, drawing blood immediately. They're doing everything they can yeah. to start running tests and see what the health is. Bring him over for a drive by to Becky, <laughs> sort of place by. him on Becky, but they, they don't actually give him to Becky. No, I right. know it just placed smish, on, smish. but they don't. They aren't letting go of the baby. Yeah. Then they put him on a, a little baby car, and <laughs> they wheel him through, and I come with them, and then they get to another set of doctors, and then they're plugging all those machines they plugged into, they're transferring to new machines, 
and uh, they're weighing him and doing all these other things. And a doctor's like, do you want to give him this vaccine? And I'm like, uh, yeah, <laughs> I think for <pretty laughs> sure. Um, and uh, it was one of the hepatitis ones. I'm like, yeah, yes. <laughs> Should I say no? I think I say yes. Well, it was I, probably I, the vitamin K shot they were asking yeah. for at it was first. Something. Hepatitis was like two days later. I think they were actually asking me about the hepatitis uh, at that time. Like oh, wow. babies just come out. It's like, you're going to want that at some point, right? I'm like, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> is he too, is he big enough? Because <laughs> um, he was, you know, four pounds, thirteen ounces. Wow. And and then they were like, they didn't. They said, yeah, he could be here a week and a half. He could be here full to term, which would be seven more weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think you're always like, well, that seems like he won't actually be here that long. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. But then you know we. Eventually get released in the hospital and we go back home and we're in this very weird limbo sort of phase where we are, we have a child, but we're, and we are parents, but we're not parenting right? Mm -hmm. actively. Mm -hmm. We are going and visiting our child who's actually being cared for by nurses and we are mm -hmm. slowly doing some of the tasks of parenting, mm -hmm. which I would say like, there are benefits, I think, to this scenario, right? We were exposed to probably 30 different nurses who all showed us their perspectives of swaddling and other things mm -hmm. and how they did things. We saw people handle him unbelievably delicately and people handle him less delicately. Oh, and yeah. he survived all those things. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that's okay. This is good to see how you can handle him. He's obviously much harder to handle than a normal baby because he's literally attached to several wires. So mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. mentally and emotionally, it was very difficult. Yeah. He also, we were ne never held him where he wasn't attached to something except mm -hmm. for maybe twice when he got a bath. Mm -hmm. Um, those are the only two times he ever wasn't attached to a machine. So, and even then he had his, um, cause he was gavaged. He had a gavage. Oh, he had a little feeding a tube, but a it was still yeah. attached to him. Mm -hmm. So he always had that in. But we went in, we read him books. We held him. He slept mostly, mostly he just sleeps and eats and you change his diaper. And the, the poop went from not having any smell to smelling worse than anything I've ever smelled in my oh life. My God. And Henry uh, was a stinker. Like you'd walk by his isolate and be like, oh, really? They were giving him like higher calorie formula, oh. which apparently is just makes him have poop, the rankest poop. farts. Yeah, yeah. And poops. Nasty. Uh, but he otherwise was very chill the whole time. He really didn't throw fits. There were lots of babies who were crying or they sounded like birds or dinosaurs and they were like, you know, they had a reputation around the room for being loud babies. But Henry <laughs> had this very great reputation of being like very chill. So like anytime he mm -hmm. would, if he did throw a fit, everybody was like, that was Henry? That was Henry? <gasps> Henry did that? <laughs> oh. Not my little precious Henry. <laughs> yeah. oh. um, so, so you knew the other parents? Like you got, uh, we, it was like a school kind of? There were some parents we kind of knew. There were yeah. parents that you, you knew familiarly and you would like yeah. wave to, but you didn't. They were like acquaintances at best. Mm. There were a couple of parents near us who we'd have slightly longer conversations with. Mm. Um, but we mostly knew their babies. Like we knew the babies next to us. Like the baby next to us was Zach. Zach yeah. with a K. Mm -hmm. Zach with a K. <laughs> we read. He was like, well, you can listen to baby. I'm reading this book. Because um, yeah, you were pretty close to the other babies. And I think at yeah. one point the nurses did start like pushing, them together. pushing the carts a little closer when Keith would come. Because mm -hmm. they were like, oh, he's going to read. It's gonna put, read. It, put it a little closer so the other like, babies can oh. hear. <laughs> Are you reading this today? I need to hear the conclusion because they're oh, kind yeah. of listening in the room. Yeah, I can oh. piece the stories together. You're but like, there's just beeps. Yeah. Everywhere uh, there's beeps. Oh, yeah. There's friendly beeps. There's unfriendly beeps. Uh, and oh. the unfriendly beeps That's scary. can cause a stir or can cause no stir. Mm -hmm. Sometimes unfriendly beeps, someone's like, it's fine. It's, not, it's like a false alarm. And sometimes it's like a real alarm and like half of the room runs to some corner of the room. And it was a fairly large NICU. It was 30 baby capacity. So the three long aisles, and I'd say it was like uh, 2,500 or 3,000 square feet. It was a rather large yeah. room. Um, and uh, we washed our hands a lot. Yep. <laughs> One of my favorite fall recipes is mushroom risotto, and I absolutely love making it in my Caraway cookware. Whether you're making a fall feast or a quick girl dinner, Caraway Homes non-toxic products make the cozy season safe and stylish. Caraway's internet famous kitchenware is a staple for any home and comes in various modern shades to fit with any design aesthetic. 
Caraway Homes non-toxic kitchenware features a chemical-free ceramic coating, so food can be prepared with peace of mind that no hard-to-pronounce chemicals will leach into your healthy ingredients. Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like PFAS, PTFE, PFOAs, or other hard-to-pronounce chemicals. Ceramics naturally slick surface means minimal oil or butter for easy cleaning. I've really been enjoying cooking with my Caraway cookware. I think it's really easy to clean up. I don't have to use a ton of oil. Visit caraway.com slash stick with us to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive for our listeners. So visit carawayhome.com slash sit with us or use code sit with us at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. As I approach my birthday this year, I really want to focus on wellness as part of my daily routine. In true Virgo fashion, I'm all in on finding the fastest and best solution. Our next partner is AG1, the daily foundational nutritional supplement that supports whole body health. I gave AG1 a try because it's easy to use and seamlessly fits into my morning routine. I just add a scoop every morning to my after workout smoothie. It has whole body health support, it's a multivitamin, probiotic, and more, and has many benefits. It really helps with my energy, mental clarity, and overall feeling healthier. It has 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients in each scoop. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and 5 free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash sit with us. That's drinkag1.com slash sit with us. Check it out. Watch it and watched our clothes a lot. Because yeah, that wasn't clothes. something they told us to do, but it was something Maggie said. Because I was like, is there anything we should be doing? Because I feel like we're just like washing our hands and then walking in. Is there anything else we should be doing? Mm-hmm. She's like, just make sure you're like going in with fresh clothes yeah. and like Basically you know, don't going spend out the day the at the mall and then go straight to there, right? Because yeah. you're yeah. Like anything that has fallen on you in. So, yeah. But we mm-hmm. didn't do anything else. Yeah. We just went, we woke up, had waffles Yum. almost mm-hmm. every single morning. Mm-hmm. These, mm-hmm. these protein m- mediocre waffles. protein waffles. Drove there, hung out for two hours, came back, made a turkey sandwich, Yum. had chips, drove back, <laughs> uh, hung out with him until dinner, came home, made dinner, went to bed, and every three hours throughout all of this, Becky would pump, mm-hmm. uh, which at first was like a little prison cell because <laughs> it was just a, a thing you had to sit in a chair mm-hmm. for, you couldn't move. So right. Becky was trapped yeah. and then insatiably thirsty within seconds. Mm. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I guess I didn't talk about it. Yeah. You get like, I don't know what it is, but you are like, and I drink a lot of water, but I was yeah. like, I'd be pumping for one minute and be like, Keith, I forgot my water bottle. <laughs> and like I would drink this hydro flask and we have another hydro flask. I'd drink that while I was pumping and then I'd drink his hydro flask. He'd switch them out for me oh when gosh. I got back in bed while yeah, he was they stay, washing. You have to stay super, super, mm-hmm. super hydrated. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Also, I, don't you have to eat like the same amount in the third trimester as breastfeeding? Like I've heard that more. it's like, it's yeah, like breastfeeding There's is the fourth trimester more. or something. You know, we only got a couple, we only got a couple weeks into that third trimester. Yeah, so that's really the, but, but yeah, they, we did eat a lot. You, yeah. your body, I, I don't know, the, 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 the thing inside of you consumes X amount more calories, but when it's outside of you, it consumes oh, uh-huh. more than that. That makes sense. Breast milk. Yeah. yeah. So you have to consume a lot of food and liquid. You should mm-hmm. tell them what you consumed a lot of that you're not normally a consumer of. Yeah, so yes, I... <laughs> Which was uh, great for me. Yeah, I, no, who's notoriously not interested in sweets, mm. ate more candy during this period of time. I just like wanted like Reese's Pieces and... Uh, dark chocolate and the little ice cream cones from Trader Joe's or otherwise, the the teensy ones. And I didn't really know why I wanted it until we looked up at one point. And apparently like when you're experiencing high stress, people Um. want sugar because sugar does some like mild stress relief chemically. So, uh, and as you know, it got further in, I was less interested in candy as things became less intense. Mm. I didn't want the candy as much. So, like literally there was one day where I was like, yeah. these m and suck. I don't like these. I don't like this anymore. And I was like, yeah. more for me. And I was yeah. like, I wanted these. And I don't like, I don't like them. Yeah. I'm just done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I remember one time we ate like, I made us like, I, one thing that I was making that I was like, this is the best thing I've ever made is a McFlurry. I would do vanilla ice cream with dark chocolate M&Ms on it and we would oh. eat it out of the pint. Ooh. And so Keith and I were eating that one night and then we got in bed and we we're like, okay, well we have to wake up to pump in like two hours. So mm-hmm. maybe we'll turn on a show. And Keith was like, can you go get the Reese's? And I got the Reese's and he was eating them. And then like I fell asleep and I came back, he was still eating the Reese's. Oh. 
And I was like, whoa, I have never seen you eat like this. (laughs) Stressed. Yeah. I mean, it was stressful. Yeah. Uh, I mean, in those kind of moments of like emergency, like in the, the birth itself, are you freaking out or are you like very calm or a mix? Uh, I feel like I always have a calm exterior uh-huh. regardless of what's going on inside. Yeah. But internally where you like, you were just like, uh, what I mean, was going through your head? I, I just felt very like powerless. Yeah. So that was, I think the stress of the scenario is that like, mm-hmm. I, I can't make food with my body. I cannot yeah. currently give the child care. The uh-huh. care, child mm-hmm. is being cared for by other people in another place. Uh, uh, like what can I do? I can clean pump parts I can go Mm -hmm. grocery shopping. Mm -hmm. I can do all those things. So I tried to fill uh, up space with a lot of tasks. Mm -hmm. Um, And then, you know, there were, we got, when we got to like week four, we were like, okay, we're going to be here probably for the long haul. So I started Mm -hmm. doing like day trips back to LA to get stuff that we needed to, uh, maybe it was week three that I finally, I was like, I'm Mm -hmm. going home to get stuff. Yeah. Because we literally were vacation mode. We had like, I had two pair of shorts two pairs of swim trunks and two shirts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't think, I think I brought Crocs and I'm like, okay, well, I won't yeah. need real shoes. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Also, <laughs> thankfully we had our college friends have a vacation rental down there and they, Jared Popkin was able to ride home with them <laughs> because All like right. later in the night I was like, Jared's got to get home. Oh, yeah, this is or the first weekend we, we all drove down together, right? And yeah. we're like, well, I don't know how Jared's going to get home. Um, <laughs> oh so we fi- but we figured it out. It worked yeah. out well. Uh, but yeah, I came home, got stuff. And then I also like did a, the occasional shoot while I was back. I was like, let me just do one shoot while I'm there for a day. So uh, just because I was like, well, I'm on paternity leave, but I'm not like paternitying. I'm just living somewhere else. So let me come and do something so that when I come back for the first couple of weeks, at least I can yeah. do like a couple of days of work from home mm-hmm. as we're transitioning to Henry being in our house and what that is, mm-hmm. which I feel like we transitioned well. We're past the uh, more difficult, like you don't get any sleep phase of the baby. Mm-hmm. We get yeah. not enough sleep still, but much more oh, yeah. than we yeah. did. Wow. I didn't tell them about the sleeping on the couch and in the rotating. Yeah, <laughs> yes, but we just, it was like you'd get so little sleep and you know you need to sleep with in the room with the baby for the first so odd, so odd time. But at that time he was eating like every three hours. And when I say that, I mean he eats every three hours. So, but he needs 30 minutes to consume food. He has reflux and especially had bad reflux then. So he needed to be held upright for 30 minutes. Right. So he's actually up for an hour purposefully then you have to put him back to sleep so he's only going to sleep for an hour 40 to two hours in between feeding so you're only going to sleep an hour 20 to an hour and a half in between feedings you actually kind of need to wake up before him so that you have his bottle warm and ready Uh because he has he has a very short (laughs) timer of when he wakes up and a bottle's in his mouth (laughs) and it's it his timer is is shorter than it takes to warm a bottle. I will say. Uh, yeah. A bottle takes like four minutes to warm. I think his timer is about two and a half minutes. Wow. Yeah. Um, so one of us slept on the couch. So the other person slept in the bedroom with the cats just because we didn't know how the cats would take to the baby yet. But also so that person could get four and a half to five hours straight of sleep. Yeah. And then at three well, in the morning. Straight. Well, not for Becky. Some she people had to are pump. pumping. Yeah, but sometimes true. you got to do a pump yeah. for at like 10 p.m. and then 3 a.m. Yeah. And I tried to make it that if like, I especially for the first few weeks when mm-hmm. Becky came in, he was already fed and put down. So she would just have to do that however long pumping would take and go to sleep, hopefully yeah. for three hours before he woke up. Which was uh, nice. And I would normally yeah. just stay up. Wow. I played video games. <laughs> And I just stayed up until three because it it was harder Mm -hmm. to, to, if you fall asleep, you have to wake up an hour and a half into what your body is assuming is going to be sleep. Yeah. You, it's hard. It feels like you don't know what year it is. I'd rather just be awake and then go to sleep for four straight hours at three Mm -hmm. and just have four hours of sleep rather than four hours plus two little one hour confusion deliriums. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would just, it was I could tell when he was starting to wake up so I could make the bottle. So yeah. it was just, it yeah. was more easy going when I did it that way. And babies mm-hmm. are noisy. Like even when you're trying to sleep, oh, even grunt. when they're sleeping, they're like, 
they just <laughs> yeah. they don't, repositioning. Maybe, yeah. Babies need Pooping. to be swaddled because they just like flail yeah. um, and they have a, a startle reflex mm-hmm. where they just flail and they'll wake themselves up. So you swaddle babies. Oh, I didn't know that's why. Basically to help mm-hmm. them contain their limbs so they can sleep better. Yeah. <laughs> but they don't necessarily want to be swaddled. So they're like, let me out of this thing. <laughs> I don't my arms. <laughs> my legs. That's exactly what I imagine him sounding like, <laughs> too. Like, I guess I'll just, I guess I'll just, I'll just go to sleep. <laughs> and then he's asleep. And then when he wakes up, he's like, hey, wait a minute. I'm in this thing still. And then you let him out. And he's like, oh, yeah. And he stretches for like two minutes straight. It's, so it's very cute, cute and he's funny. so cute. Uh, so we, yeah, we got back from vacation seven <laughs> weeks later and realized that summer was over <laughs> and and then I adjusted to him in the house and now he's got stuff and he can kind of play with things kind of yeah um, at mm-hmm. least he, his attention he can follow oh, things yeah. you can grab uh-huh. his attention he's starting to smile which is nice mm-hmm. that's helpful yeah to gate because he doesn't really communicate Otherwise, mm-hmm. but you, you learn to understand the communication that they have mm-hmm. to somewhat understand like, oh, he's hungry. or like, oh, he needs to burp. Oh, he if it's not those things, he must not like his diaper. And if it's mm-hmm. not one of those things, he's just fed up and tired. Yeah. Yeah. I was telling Zach and Maggie about this um, thing that I was showing Keith where there was it's it is not scientific. I guess there was no studies done on this, mm. but people do use it. Is there was this opera singer who was like, this is the seven ways babies communicate. And like, if you can hear like their seven cries or five cries, oh, whatever it is, then you could try and figure out what they oh. need. And the one that I think that for at least Henry that we do hear is she said when a baby's hungry because they want to suckle, they'll put their tongue at the top of their mouth. So when they cry, it sounds like nah, yeah. nah, nah. Yeah. And you have to listen for the N. And then the other one that we can hear in him is um, when he has to burp. Uh, they said if there's gas trapped in, they're trying to burp. So, uh, eh, 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 because they're trying to get the air out in short little spurts. Uh-huh. Yeah. But there were other ones that she had and like, you know. But those are his main two. He loves Those he are loves his main eating. two. He yeah, loves, loves eating and burping. Mm. Yeah. Or he, well, he, he burps big because he loves eating. <laughs> those big burps. He big burps. Big, big adult sounding burps. It's very funny. Oh. Yeah. Uh, where does he get it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wonder where. Um, I don't know where. <laughs> yeah. He's, I weighed him. He's 14 pounds today. Whoa. So he's, Whoa. He's, he's, big boy. He's, he's definitely growing just fine, even though he is a premature baby. I think he's about the correct weight of his age Mm -hmm. rather than his adjusted age. Mm -hmm. Uh, What did you not expect about being a dad? What surprised you? Or that like, oh, people don't talk about this. Well, I mean, I think what is good is that is that being a dad now is very different than being Mm -hmm. a dad in the 50s or the 60s or the 70s (laughs) or the 80s when they're really not a part of it. First of all, it's obvious to me that the mother has to do so much already just as a matter of biology right right like you're actually your body has undergone a trauma (laughs) and then you're it's being taught a new one through breastfeeding and that's all happening all at the same time it takes like you know months to become somewhat whatever normal means again Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. or or to a state before although you're never to the state before again right your body's changed Mm -hmm. your your physical physiological self is different right um but you also like you have to wake up to feed. You have to do these things because you have to pump milk. So you just have a different schedule of life. So I think the fact that fathers were so unhelpful before is pretty wild. Yeah. Because it's mm-hmm. just like how can you see that occur Yeah, and not try to do t- other tasks like uh, cleaning the pump parts. And we even heard from other people there like some nurses were like, you're cleaning the pump parts for her? Wow, you sure are lucky, Becky. I'm like, she is? <laughs> Sounds like everyone else is really unlucky. Yeah. <laughs> this, I feel like, yeah. should be the, the expectation. When we heard that, we were both like, what? Yeah, we saw, I saw guys that seemed not invested, but I saw many men that were, mm-hmm. from what I could yeah. tell. Uh, I mean, yesterday, no changing table in the men's bathroom where we right, were. Right, we were yeah. talking about that. So, like, that I had to... Luckily, there was a portion of sink next to the actual sink. There's like a countertop next to mm-hmm. the sink that was big enough to change him. But I'm like, yeah, but now I'm taking up the sink of the bathroom. Right. So if someone else needs to wash their hands, I, I need 
four minutes right to yeah do all this and also like uh it's just not ideal yeah so that that was a bummer however we also went oh. to a mall and found the greatest well you know we'll we'll say the mall name because everybody in la needs to know well, about I, where. I do we want everyone to know oh gate you want to gate <laughs> keep you want to gate keep so it's at the century city mall it's by the apple store okay it's you see the regular bathroom and then there's a family bathroom i've been taking henny out on like little excursions so i've gotten used to asking for the family bathroom yeah because it means it's a big enough bathroom to bring a stroller in with mm-hmm, you mm-hmm. um because i don't want to take up you know the other stall and there's but the anyhow. family bathroom at the airport it's like just a bigger bathroom, right? Yeah, right. just and a bigger bathroom. It has a change table and a toilet and a sink, but it just, it's just—it's—it's a personal bathroom. Mm-hmm. So I asked where the family bathroom was. Mm-hmm. Keith was in the other bathroom, the regular yeah. bathroom, and I was like, "I'm going to go to the family bathroom so I can pee and Henry can eat." And I open the door. It's like the, a beautiful play place. Oh! There's these little cubbies that you can go in that Whoa. have a comfortable chair to feed. It was another a lounge. chair. It was a lounge. It there was were multiple families in there. A lounge with wow. two little nooks that yeah. had a curtain divider. So if you wow. wanted to breastfeed in private or do mm-hmm. whatever else you wanted to do uh, in private, yeah. you had a little private zone that wasn't a toilet. And then there was a separate bathroom. That yeah, that's was nice. There. And then there was there were. Yeah. Sinks with changing tables that were sort of like built into them, and they were like, uh, they had like concave structures so that like you wouldn't have to worry about a baby rolling off. Oh, yeah. that's so it was cool. like you place your baby into the changing table that was next to the sink with a garbage can for like diapers specifically. It was yeah. just very conducive to a family environment. And every single family that walked <laughs> yeah. in it was like, Whoa. Oh my god. Gosh! Yeah. We all had the same this reaction. Is, and it was also <laughs> seemed like a great place to bring your kid if your kid is throwing a fit. Uh-huh. That's, another family came in and the mom was like, this is where we're going to calm down. And yeah. there's there was in front of the little cubby that I was in where you could pull the curtain. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why I assume they had a curtain was because the area in front of it was a little playpen. So uh-huh. if you had another kid, uh-huh. they could be playing. You yeah. can watch them and feed or change so or nice. you know do whatever you need to do with your younger kid. Yeah. Like wow. It was. So nice. Yeah. So Century City Mall. Is everybody needs Westfield to. Is everyone needs to do this the at way. their malls. And yeah, their, whoever designed that, whoever designed it, it is a star. It yeah. was definitely like to me the most correct way that it should be everywhere. Mm-hmm. I get that not everywhere has the the space to do that, mm-hmm. but it was an ideal scenario. Wow. Of, of a family bathroom. Yeah. An area just to have sort of like a zone for children to be while you're doing whatever you're doing with a baby because yeah. babies yeah. take kind of all your attention. Mm-hmm. And if you've got a three-year-old or a four-year-old, I'm sure it's very, uh, it's annoying to the four-year-old, right, to have to wait around and do nothing. Right. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's also annoying to the, the mother to try to try to take care or Wrangle. whatever. Yeah. So Corral the truth. It was, it was also nice because it was a nice chair to, bre- to nurse in mm-hmm. and Keith could sit next to me. Whereas like when we go out to other places, if we're not yeah. sitting somewhere that's like that comfortable, and I'll nurse them in public. Like, that doesn't really bother me. But mm-hmm. the nice chair, I was like, oh, I want to do it in this chair. Yeah. Like, other bathrooms, Keith obviously wouldn't have been able to come in. I'd be sitting there and I'd be bored. And yeah. I'd be like, I'm just sitting here with Henry. You can't talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just sitting. Yeah. <laughs> so that was nice. Shout mm-hmm. out to Century City Mall. Mm-hmm. Huge. Oh. Um, well, we're halfway through. So, Keith, is there any closing statements mm. on your the birth of your child? <laughs> mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be easy to sum up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, it's it's fun. It's like very uh, gratifying. Mm-hmm. Obviously, it's cool. It's very fun to watch him discover things. And yeah. I'll be very excited because I think the next few months mm-hmm. are when he really starts to discover things and mm-hmm. makes more uh, noticeable improvements. I think what's been tough about having a premature child is that um, – the adjusted age basically means, okay, they aren't hitting their developmental stages until later. So you actually, for the first our first two months, we had a newborn, and then the third month was a newborn, and then the right. fourth mm-hmm. month was a newborn, yeah. and other people have a newborn for two months, and then they start having yeah. get, getting those progressions. So we mm-hmm. have just had um, a beautiful little slug <laughs> for, for so long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I think part of what makes being a parent gratifying is – when you're dealing with all this difficult stuff of waking yeah. up or mm-hmm. a fussy baby that you can't console is that at some point you start getting feedback and you start seeing them smile or they notice yeah. their hands and stuff. And for us, that has just been a longer yeah. journey mm-hmm. than right. uh, the, the normal gestational birth age 
situation people Mm -hmm. get to have. So that was tough. And we also had the difficulty of being in the hospital. But everybody has their own difficult experience. I don't (laughs) think there's a world where it's easy Mm -hmm. to have a human come out of your body and then uh, be sent home with it and be told good luck. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah. There were times where we were in the NICU and we we're like, can you believe they just give people babies? Yeah. You just get to take your baby home. Yeah. It's like, such a learning crazy. curve. I was like, there's no, even when we got discharged from the hospital, there's no information on anything. I mean, there was a whole lot of like well, we nurse, of, we, had a lot pack, we had a lot of packets. Right <laughs> we were sent home with lots of packet books yeah. of like, here's things to do. Here's, here's things to know. But they're like, textbook vibes so they're yeah. not super friendly and uh engaging but also you get yeah. all of them at once you're like what am i supposed to do with six books this one's about you becky this one's <laughs> about him for i guess last week actually this one <laughs> 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 uh, whoops but, yeah and so it was just yeah that was it was a lot of the things were overwhelming i think it's always overwhelming but it's very fun mm-hmm. he's yeah. goofy he's very cute obviously uh, he's so good cute. looking baby. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and he is good at eating. I he think that, yeah, the, the problem, you know, some, some people have babies that don't want to eat mm-hmm. or yeah. don't want to eat doesn't have any of those issues so that's very lucky for us yeah. oh uh, yeah but he does have reflux and he burps and it's wild mm. he burps it's, like a real human yeah you gotta get a burp out of him or else he's gonna grunt all night long so <laughs> last night i woke up and i was just walking around for 20 minutes trying to get him to burp give so me that go burp. To sleep. yeah <laughs> That's it. That's it. That's it. That's Honey Habs. Well, thanks for having me. Well, thanks for coming. Enjoy the rest of your your version. Thanks. Thanks Thanks for coming out. Bye, Honey. Bye, Dad. Have fun with Honey. If you can get him from Rachel or Erica. Now we're going to do Maggie's perspective as an auntie. Yay! (laughs) Well. We'll do. Well, you know. We'll bring every aunt and uncle in. It's been so hard. (laughs) You know, this adjustment period, you know, I have to like wake up and like think about him. (laughs) Sweet Maggie and Zach when they were in the NICU and even Matt. So when Matt first came, Mm -hmm. he came like right after Henny was born. And I was like, okay, you can't touch him, obviously. Like nobody can touch him except mm-hmm. for me and Keith and the nurses. And he was so sensory that you couldn't rub him. Like rubbing his skin mm-hmm. would make him, it would like Startle. feel painful. Yeah. So they were like, you can put your hand on him, like hold him, right? And then yeah. as it started going, like Zach and Maggie came in towards the end and I was like, okay, you could touch his foot if you want or you could put his little hat Aww. on, you know. Um, but seeing both of them, you were only allowed to have one person other than the parent in with you. So mm-hmm. I went in with Maggie and Zach went in with Keith and we mm-hmm. would just kind of rotate for like an hour. Yeah. Um, and both Zach and Maggie were like, I just want to hold this baby. You could see it like in their hands. <laughs> they were like, like, I just, like, <laughs> just let me hold this baby. I'm like, let me just put one <laughs> little finger. Okay. We, we're holding hands. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think some of the things I was really surprised about, I knew you were going to be uh, like an auntie that wanted to like always be holding and like snuggling. Mm-hmm. I did not see Zach being oh Zach God. is like, he will like look at me and I'll be like, here you go. And he just like, he's like getting used to holding yeah. him now, but he like loves it. Yeah. And Eugene was the one that I was actually surprised about. He was one of the most supportive friends I've had in pregnancy. Oh my God. Obviously he's scared of the baby right now because he doesn't <laughs> love when babies can't control their own heads. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, I'm also a person who's like, if you don't want to hold a baby, you don't have to hold my baby. That's fine. Yeah. Like, yeah. YOLO. There are plenty of other friends <laughs> that will take take that turn. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it was actually at Zach and Maggie's wedding because we were in Mexico. Mm-hmm. I don't know what was happening with me, but my feet were getting so swollen oh. and it was so, it hurt so bad that mm-hmm. like Keith was massaging my feet. I was just massaging my feet. You did we were, your foot massage? We were sitting while Maggie <laughs> was putting on her dress with her mom. We were downstairs and I was kind of rubbing my feet. And Eugene goes, do you want me to rub your feet? And I was like, yes. <laughs> and he sat there and just massaged my feet for like <laughs> probably wow. 10, 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> and he would, when um, Matt actually told him that I was pregnant because we had had lunch and I was like, oh yeah, you could tell him. Eugene called me. Yeah. Probably called me once a day for the next like three or four days oh. to like, talk about baby things and he's like okay well I'm getting a feeling that it's like gonna be a boy and like oh maybe we could he's like what kind of names are we thinking about we- like <laughs> that one really surprised me I was like I figured he would not care at all about not like not care but babies aren't really his thing yeah, yeah. but he was very excited that's yeah. so sweet. it was really sweet <laughs> it was really cute and then yeah Zach is 
uncle, Uncle Zach is uncle like, Zach. Give Auntie. me this baby. Yeah. yeah. Give me this baby. When was the first? So you met him in the NICU. When did you find out that he was pregnant? And what were you, were you like? <laughs> oh, my God. You have to tell her. <laughs> this is such an embarrassing story. So uh, where were we? I think we were on FaceTime. Yeah. I don't it was know why we had, did it in person. I think you kept going. You were out of town and then Zach was injured. So we did, like never oh, were seeing oh. you in person for like. Yes. Probably like two months. It was like little spurts where we would actually You're see right. you. Uh-huh. Um, so this was like a FaceTime call. It was Zach calls me into the room and was like, Becky has something to tell us. And I was like, okay. And I was like, hey guys, what's up? And Keith and Becky's on the phone and they're like, just so you know, like at your wedding, I can't have, I just wanted like RSVP and then <laughs> tell you about my dietary restrictions. No red <laughs> meat, no raw food. And I was like, oh, okay. And Zach, and Zach was like, elbows me he's like you don't get it and I was like oh. I was like well I can't really drink alcohol and Maggie's like okay <laughs> no questions Fine. asked no questions needed yeah. like all right that sounds good and he elbows me and I'm like wait, wait, wait. <laughs> yeah I guess we like yeah yeah that it was, was really funny that was really yeah oh my god it feels like so long ago but I also know. like not very long ago either but yeah I know I was thinking it's weird that like he was only in you for seven months. Like, that's actually not very long. I know. That's what, like, I've been seeing people do the, like, picture that you take where they're in you as long as they were out of you. Yeah. And, like, right now, I think it was last week, we were out of the NICU longer than we were in it. Congrats. Oh, my God. <laughs> Huge. No. Huge. That's... Penny's only been, like, in our house for, like, a month and a half. Ugh. That's so weird. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. I feel like he's yeah. been here forever. <gasps> he's been here forever. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just so perfect. I love him. He's I love him. Cute. And the reason I always want to hold him, because <laughs> I know it may, it may not feel this way to you, Becky, but there's going to be a point where he's not going to be want to be held anymore. And it's just like, it's so hard to wrap your mind around now just because mm-hmm. it's such an exciting time. But I'm like, I want to hold him all the time. He's, oh. Me and Kim are going to get into like... You and Kim, there was that, um, what was it? When they were doing Romeo and Juliet live... Uh, Maggie was holding Henry and it was the last night. My parents came into town yeah, um, for, a bit. for like two weeks after and I didn't he was realize. born. <laughs> and I was like, Maggie, it is the last night. So my mom <laughs> might murder you if you don't give that baby back. I could just feel Kim just staring at me, yeah. like watching Romeo and Juliet. But also I'm like, oh, I was like, oh my God, how rude of me. I'm taking baby <laughs> from grandma. Here you go. Oh. Yeah. It was also like, a, we called it like a very rude awakening when my parents left because, oh yeah. You know how like some parents aren't like very, I, I don't know. I We only have this one baby. Yeah. I only have these one parents. But yeah, I've right. heard other friends talk about their parents maybe not being the most helpful when they mm-hmm. were in town. Because you think about how long it's been since they yeah, since have actually changed had, a diaper. Yeah. We yeah. are um, in our 30s. Total opposite <laughs> for Kim and Don. Yeah. Kim was feeding Henry, changing Henry. She would, I would take a nap and she would watch it because, you know, he was eating out of a bottle. So it was like, Aww. as long as there was pumped milk, she would feed him. Yeah. I never, my dad went to the grocery store like every other day. I never had to go to the grocery store. Oh, wow. I was like, having a baby's easy. <laughs> this is so <laughs> nice. I would like wake up, you know, it was still at that time where he was waking up every three hours. So it'd be like, 5 a.m., 6 a.m., my, my mom would come in. Mm-hmm. We'd have coffee. Becky, We'd go for a little walk. And I was so like, this sweet. is so nice. This is great. And like the day after they left, I was like, uh-uh. <laughs> I was like, where are my friends? Oh. I say, where's grandma and grandpa? Oh, oh my mom did my laundry. Oh. Did our laundry and put it away. <gasps> except for our stuff that goes in our drawers. She goes, I don't want to know what's in your drawers. <gasps> but she Fair was enough. like, does Keith think I'm weird for doing this? And I was like, mom. It's just happy he's not doing it. Yeah. He does not <laughs> care in the slightest. Wow. She made our bed. Oh my god. It was luxury. I don't oh even my know god. how she fit it all in the day. <gasps> Honestly. I don't Honestly. have kids, but can I borrow Kim? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was, would like a Kim. <laughs> we were always like, oh, come back. Oh, come back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was very cute. And I would my dad was a little less comfortable with Henry just because mm-hmm. he's like a taller guy and he was really, you know, very tiny at yeah. that time. So I think he was just uncomfortable with like Nervous. burping yeah. him and like the head stuff. The head stuff is kind of disconcerting. Oh, it is. You're like, you yes. Know. Well, yeah. and people, I forget who asked me, but they were like, so do you think it's like similar to having a cat? You know how people say like, oh, oh having yeah. a baby is kind of like having a dog or a cat, like the responsibility yeah. of a pet. And I'm like, to be honest, 
a lot of it is. It's, it is sort of like, okay, you're responsible for this life. Yeah, I feel like there's yeah. more pressure on being responsible for a human than the pressure of being responsible for an animal. Yeah. yeah. Though I did feel like, you know, I, I was a pet mom first. Yeah. I have my yeah. two other little boys. Yeah. So yeah. I know what it's like to be a pet parent. Yeah. <laughs> How do and they, I yeah. do think it's similar to being a real oh, parent. Yeah. You I mean, know what I mean? Especially if like, I feel like like when I go, I don't have pets, but like when I go home, I'm like, where's Wookie? What's Wookie doing? What's he doing? Yeah. Is he okay? Is he okay? You know, it's like, I'm, it's fun to be obsessed. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You're just like, you're so cute. You're you so like cute. take all the pictures. They're yeah. super cute. How do and they like, react? Bowie, you have to oh, take yeah. him out and walk him. Yeah. Wouldn't it be great if you had the right wardrobe to match your evolving lifestyle? Whether you're picking up a new activity, looking for maternity wear, or simply bored of your old clothes, the stylists at Stitch Fix make sure you always have something to wear. Stitch Fix is the best way to shop new styles and brands. Your stylist will learn all about your tastes and collaborate with you on looks you'll love without breaking the bank. You simply share your style, sizes, and budget with a quick style quiz, and Stitch Fix sends you five items in a fix right to your door. With your choices in mind and sizes from extra small to 3XL, they'll find your perfect fit. My style is very casual, very relaxed. I found Stitch Fix really easy to use. I got a great pair of Madewell jeans and styled them with a really cute pair of checkered vans. Thanks, Stitch Fix. They just get me. And they'll get you too. Try today at stitchfix.com slash sit with us and you'll get 25% off when you keep everything in your fix. That's stitchfix.com slash sit with us. Stitchfix.com slash sit with us. I love my Lumi deodorant. Lumi was created by an OBGYN who discovered and proved in clinical testing that the vagina is not to blame for day-to-day -day odor below the belt. So she developed Lumi, a uniquely formulated pH balanced deodorant. It's aluminum free, skin safe, and clinically proven to control odor for up to 72 hours. New customers get $5 off Lumi's starter pack with code SITWITHUS at lumideodorant.com. I love that I can throw Lumi in my purse. I love that it comes in like a cream form. They have deodorant, they have body wipes. It's a whole body deodorant, the first of its kind. Lumi is seriously safe to use anywhere on your body. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice like mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off a Lumi starter pack with code SITWITHUS at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code SITWITHUS. So you walk Henry every day. Is that good for your mental health? I think it really is yeah. because I was really nervous, like I said, on the last podcast. And I've never really talked about it before because mm -hmm. I was like, it's nobody's fucking business. Mm -hmm. But also I feel like from stories that I've heard from other people or even yeah. like people on TikTok talking about their doctors, talking about yeah. their mental health medication, like not every person has a doctor like my doctor who yeah. was like, no, this is like a panic attack is worse for a baby than yeah. or a fetus than, you know, sure. whatever the very minimal side effects of the Zoloft are. Mm -hmm. So just keep doing it. Um, without that, like I actually increased my dosa yeah. dosage during pregnancy to prepare right. for postpartum because I already yeah. have um, PMDD, which is like when yeah. you, it's like having PMS on steroids essentially uh -huh. where you're just like very, very, you get very, very low. Yeah. It's, it's also common for people who already have depression or anxiety to yeah. also have PMDD with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's just that hormone fluctuation. Mm -hmm. And thankfully, I did not experience postpartum from right. my friends yeah. who have. It sounds absolutely horrific. I did not have the baby blues. Mm -hmm. I was, I had the normal stress of being in the NICU. Right. Um, yeah. So without my medication, I would have, yeah. Oh, yeah, it would have been awful. And then adding on top of that, like having to be in the house, like mm -hmm. those couple weeks where I was or those couple days where I was with Henry when Keith was going back to work. Yeah. And I wasn't necessarily the most comfortable taking him out by myself. Yeah. That was like so isolating. Yeah. And yeah. so and all of my mom friends were like, it's going to be really hard. Yeah. During this time specifically. So like text me if you want to do something, mm -hmm. whatever. And now it's like taken my mental health from like very low to very high to Aww. be like okay we're going outside yeah. yeah like we're just gonna go I'm gonna pack you up I have all the stuff in the car like yeah. we're just gonna go somewhere yeah mm -hmm. not like we have to go somewhere that's like 
I mean, I'm not really taking him to museums or anything. We're yeah. literally just going to like malls and walking around. Yeah. yeah. And I will say like that in and of itself, which I don't think we've even mentioned in the last po- podcast is like such a privilege that while I had almost every choice taken away from me in mm-hmm. pregnancy, in child rearing, I mm-hmm. am now in total control mm-hmm. yeah. and I get to have the choice to stay home, mm-hmm. which yeah. My mom didn't have the choice. Your mom didn't Mm -hmm. have the choice. I don't know about your parents, but Mm -hmm. like for the majority of people, having one parent stay home is not a choice that they get to make. Right. Both parents have to work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that has been just an incredible privilege and has sort of offset some of the things that I get sad about, you know, looking back Mm -hmm. into pregnancy. Like one day I'll look back and be like, oh yeah, this was beautiful and all this stuff, but I'm still in the yeah. phase where I'm like, uh, it's too soon. I don't yeah. love it. I didn't love it. I didn't really scary. love yeah. birth. Very scary, very stressful. Mm-hmm. I love yeah. this. I love having Henry yeah. and being able to go do stuff and like spend yeah. all the time with him. What's your favorite part of having <gasps> How cute he is. <laughs> <laughs> I love kissing him. Yeah. I mean, he was just, I just kiss that baby all over yeah. um, and like snuggle him. Yeah. How can you not? Oh, yeah. I have to stop though because I'm like, this is not my kid. But I like have been like person. I was like, this is not my baby. Yeah. <laughs> no, Zach and Maggie were like in the corner, and Zach's like kissing the top of Henry's <gasps> head. Oh. Which I will say, if you don't like know the parents, don't kiss babies. They yeah. can get like weird diseases from adults kissing them. So if you're an adult, yeah. like make sure like we, they know it's okay that they kiss him on the head. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, they've just they like cleared it. They, they cleared, cleared it. it. They yeah. cleared it with us. They are not just kissing our baby willy nilly. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think just like getting to snuggle with him and like Keith said like seeing him develop and like yeah. getting to more of those like fun milestones that he's having mm-hmm. Keith kind of touched on it but that like old mentality that we've seen either in like movies or TV mm-hmm. of like the dads coming home and being like make me dinner woman yeah. and those yeah. kind of things <laughs> like that is like not the experience that I've <laughs> Had. Yeah, mm-hmm. and like I said, I feel like I'm a good parent because Keith's a good parent. Because mm-hmm. like when he comes home, it's not like I mean, it is a mix of like Becky needs a break from taking care of Henry during yeah. the day, but it's also Keith's gone during the day. So if he's yeah. not giving waking him up in the morning and doing his yeah. morning feed and then putting him to bed at night, mm-hmm. when's he gonna see him? Right. Like Keith comes yeah. home and is like, "Give me my baby. Me my like baby. this is our out. time. Yeah." yeah. This is our time. If he doesn't hang out with him then, then he's just, he goes to sleep because now he only really wakes yeah, up right. maybe like once, twice in the night. Mm-hmm. So he wouldn't have that time to like snuggle. Yeah. And I think doing exclusively pumping at the beginning while it did give me a crazy oversupply, mm-hmm. which was painful, um, was really helpful in like letting Keith bond with Henry. Oh, yeah. Because he was able to take part. And it took, it really helped me not yeah. feel like, because you are the sole provider of like the food when you're yeah. uh, nursing. But since I was pumping, Keith was able to experience that too, mm-hmm. which was so nice. Yeah. yeah. And it's I feel just, like yeah. we've really run the gamut of like nursing, formula. pumping, bottles, formula, mm-hmm. fortified breast milk. Like this kid has everything. Like yeah. we are obviously a fed is best family. Like mm-hmm. who cares? That baby needs to get fat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that was just it. It was like, that's the goal. Gain as much weight as you can. Let's go, baby. Yeah. Um, so it was really nice to have. And like my mom being able to feed him. That was yeah. like, because she doesn't get to see him. Yeah. I mean, they FaceTime. <laughs> they FaceTime every day. She really FaceTime every, every day. day. Yeah. Almost yeah. every day. Yeah. Yeah. And she's coming. Really she'll come back at some point. Yeah. She's actually coming back next week. We're really oh, excited. Yay. But then it'll be her longest stretch. So I think she'll be, she's going to be a little sad because he doesn't yeah. have all of his vaccines. Like I said, babies are anti vaxxers when they're yeah. first born because they have to wait so long for things. So we want to make sure that he gets his COVID shot, that mm-hmm. he gets all of his stuff. So we're not traveling for the holidays. Oh, yeah. yeah. So oh, he I won't see be able to go bef- between, mm-hmm, yeah, before yeah. we come back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, planes are like actually disgusting. So I gross. Can't handle it. And I'm also yeah. like, I mean, it's got to be tough for any parent, but. Keith is 6'3". You think that man's taking a baby into an airplane bathroom to change his diaper? I've like, seen the changing tables how are they doing? in the airplane bathrooms recently because I didn't even know they were there. But I was in the bathroom and it like had been, I think it just like popped open and I was like, mm-hmm. this is the changing table? It's literally yeah. behind you. It's I didn't tiny. really yeah. realize there was that. Yeah. It's yeah. so It's basically tiny. like you pop it open and yeah, it's teensy. 
and horrifying. <laughs> yeah, I have I've our friends, thankfully we have lots of friends with babies have been yeah. able to give us a lot of really yeah. good tips. Mm. And also um Sarah Bonsignore is like queen mom in my eyes. Oh. She is a star. Yeah. She like let me borrow what her hands free pump so I was able to like move around and it made mm. me feel less like yeah, I don't know, a prisoner to this like pumping schedule that I was in that I could actually get up and walk around. Huge, yeah. They've given us so many like secondhand. I mean, all of our friends have really given yeah. us a lot of like secondhand things. But yeah. something, something about being friends with another mom. Yeah, like, they can just show up so for helpful. you in ways that maybe yeah. you're friends without children. Like Can't. a big community. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. a huge community. And like yeah. he's riding around in uh, Rachel's carrier right now. Oh. Like. <laughs> It's just this big network, I feel like, that we yeah. have, that we're incredibly lucky to have in L.A. of, like, yeah. trading and giving stuff away to other moms and parents mm -hmm. and, like, meeting other moms and parents is yeah. just, like, very helpful. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I feel like also speaking of community and, like, I've, when you were telling the story, mm -hmm. it's such an intimate experience with Keith. Like Keith was like opening the bathroom door multiple oh, times in that story. Yeah. And kind of being like, okay, like, and then... I, like I don't know it's it's very it's kind of really beautiful and oh yeah and also kind of scary to me a little bit oh horrifying but that's a personal thing I was actually like the first time they're like once I realized how much stuff I had to walk around with in the hospital because also I'm leaking this fluid so I'm wearing these massagers so it is going yeah. like it's going on what the massagers, the massagers it's going doing? on the floor they are so you don't get blood clots because oh, you're not moving. Okay. So it yeah. like lightly wow. massages your like it uh -huh. like squeezes your legs. It basically. redistributes blood. So as soon as you like okay. meet a certain criteria in the hospital, so she was on bed rest, they're like, Oh no, we have to prevent yeah. blood clots. Oh. Um usually more common the older you get and oh, like yeah. the poorer blood flow, but Zach really liked it. I know Zach was like, did you like it? I was like, yeah, except for the part where like the fluid would like leak down into them yeah. and then I'd have to clean them. And yeah. but the plus side fluid is like not smelly and oh. it's clear that and like, good. it just like seems like nothing. Oh, so water. that was, it's just like some sort of fluid water. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think my first thought when they were like, oh yeah, Keith has to help you to the bathroom. I was like, what if I have to poop? We're not a poop in front of each other kind of play, like family. Yeah. Even like peeing in front of each other, Keith doesn't really like. But every once in a while, I'm like, Keith, I really What happens if during labor or something? I know. Well, you know, my, Keith, actually, we're not a poop in front like of each other. He picked up my phone when my friend Hannah was texting me. And she was like, I was telling her about the birth. And she was like, oh, my God, did you poop? And I was like, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, if I did, they didn't tell me. And she wrote back, slay. <laughs> <laughs> and Keith was like, is this how you tell people about it? I'm like, yeah. We just slay. slay. I also think at that point in like labor and like giving birth, you're so unconcerned yeah. with the poop of it all. Or oh the, yeah, it's like such or a the, small, the, the blood yeah. of it all or the fluid of it all. Like you're just like you're just surviving. Like, yeah. You're just like get get out. Get yeah. out. Yeah. Leave my body. Come also, to me, I assume baby. Keith was just at your shoulder the entire time or did he ever take a little peek well he was at my shoulder but the position because I, I know other people ha who have given birth in different positions I wasn't allowed to move right. I don't know if that was something wow. I could have advocated for better yeah. or asked for but I was strictly on my back the entire time uh -huh. um, so your knees kind of go like Honestly, they were like very close to like getting into my shoulders. Like wow. you are really folded like a little pretzel. Yeah. yeah. So and he's tall. So not that he like popped around to see anything, yeah. but he, he could yeah, see. he could see it. Yeah. yeah. He could see it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. YOLO. YOLO. The body's crazy. I know. It's crazy. Now there's a whole another human in the there's world. A a whole, and we have to be responsible for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's mandatory. It's, it's mandatory. Like every <laughs> once in a while I am like, oh yeah, Keith, you can go do this thing and then I'll do this thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. oh no. Because someone no, no. has to watch Henry. Mm -hmm. yeah. Henry is not to be left alone <laughs> <laughs> in the house. Yeah. <laughs> or really anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> what do Grandpa Barry and Alfred think of him? They're chill. They yeah. really are like, yeah. hey. They're, <laughs> they're like... I've just now started like nuzzling him or Aww. looking at him. There were times where when he was like very first at home and I was trying to nurse sometimes in the middle mm -hmm. of the night um, and Grandpa Barry would sit on my lap and then Henry would be up here Aww. and Grandpa Barry would be down here. But he's not. Grandpa Barry's like very hesitant. He's a very cautious cat. Mm. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And Alfred Grandpa Barry's got a lot going on. He's got a lot going on. Yeah. He's a real grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah, you're like a whole family. Like you're We're a family like a unit. We are a family unit. So it's crazy. We have a family. Yeah. I yeah. think the first time I ever said like, oh yeah, my kid's doing this. Or I was like, <gasps> oh, oh yeah. 
Like I'm too young to be a mother. <laughs> oh my god, I, f- I feel that way too. I feel like saying husband now has aged me. A hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I went to like an all women's pickleball event <laughs> yesterday, and Maggie's everyone's pickleball queen now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> so fun, so fun. <laughs> Highly recommend. It's very good for your brain too. Hand eye coordination. Oh, I bet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Love. I'm trying yeah. to, you know, optimize my brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, but someone was like, oh, when did you graduate college? I was just like, oh, God. I was like, do I lie right now? Do I say 2020? Um, um, and I don't know how the topic came up. And they were, we were talking about scoring. I was like, oh, usually my husband keeps score. And they were like, you have a husband? And I was like, "You're like, oh, wait. I'm We're old. Like, I do. I am a senorita. I am a senora. Old. Yeah, but anyway. I used to joke. I was like, do you think people are going to think I'm like a, like a 20-something, like a teen mom? Yeah. And he was like, no. No one. <laughs> no one's gonna think that you're a teen mom. Yeah, I think you're a teen mom. You got the skincare, right? You've been, have you been putting on sunscreen? I've been putting on sunscreen on yeah. Henry. Oh, no, you know what? That was okay. So when you he's like, yeah, when you go to the pediatrician, yeah. you are like, at least our experiences, you are with your pediatrician for like. 25, 30 minutes. So you mm-hmm. ask yeah. every question you've ever thought yeah. of in the middle of the night. Got a list, you know. notes app. I have yeah. a notes app list. Yeah. Should and I start retina now? Was, yeah. Yeah, should, should I put retinol on him? Um, <laughs> <laughs> will it keep him young forever? Uh, but I, we put sunscreen on there. We were like, yeah. uh, can we put sunscreen on him? Yeah. Because when I was going on those morning walks, it was super hot outside. Right. And so mm-hmm. whatever, no. Mm. she said you should not put a sunscreen on a baby before they're six months old. Oh. So they should use physical barriers. Oh. Mm, so they're little so that's sun why visor. I put the little yeah the sun visors little muslin cloth things as long as there's a good like airflow in between yeah. it mm-hmm. um but yeah does he need direct sun he doesn't need direct sunlight then um he doesn't good for you? I don't know. it's good so like a lot of preemies have jaundice which he did have oh yeah so he was under like a billy light for t- a certain amount of time mm-hmm. but there were other babies in the NICU with us that were like some babies were there as long as we were, six weeks plus. Yeah. Um, and other ones were just ones that came in for like a day or two, which is still like horrifying um, mm-hmm. and like very scary for those parents. Um, mm-hmm. But we would hear them getting discharged. Mm-hmm. And for the ones that had like just gotten over their jaundice, uh-huh. they told them to stand like in front of a window or like Aww. stand outside with the baby. So they got direct sunlight for yeah. a little bit. Yeah, mm-hmm. vitamin D. Mm-hmm. Some vitamin D. Yeah. 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 It's cray cray. Babies are nuts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Learned a lot. I still learned. Learned. You probably learned a lot. I learned a lot. I'm still learning. Yeah. Lifelong learner. <laughs> Lifelong learner. We love to learn here. Um, but I this I don't think this will be a continuing podcast for us. You know what no, I mean? Like yeah. baby focused. Yeah. Henry will obviously be talked about. Yeah. I yeah. mean, he's cute and adorable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we got to hear what's going on with Vanderpumps. You know, you can be yeah. a mom and love reality TV too yeah. and yeah. love trashy teen dramas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I know what happens with Matt's quails. Matt's quails. Yeah. We need to News. know. Yes. <laughs> I just think there's a lot going on. And hopefully by the time that next episode comes out, the writer's mm-hmm. strike will be over and we'll be fairly compensating our writers so I can yeah. tell you about all the exciting TV we've been watching. Really, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. I'm just like, pay people. Pay people. Literally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's so stupid. Just pay people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hashtag pay people. Hashtag pay people. <laughs> Hashtag lifelong learners. Yeah. 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 Well, thank you guys for tuning in each week. We are so appreciative of all of you. Um, be sure to be washing your hands, tipping your servers, be kind to yourself, be kind to others, uh, pee after sex, and we will see you next time on You Can Sit, sit with, with Us. us. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Ha, 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 ha.